Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss Surgery One video. In today's video, it is finally time to talk the DC 10 again. Yes, the McDonnell Douglas DC 10 to be exact. Or as we like to call it sometimes on this channel, the McDonnell. Because McDonnell Douglas doesn't really exist anymore, does it? But whatever, this is the DC 10. Now, yes, this plane was introduced around 50 years ago. And uh, yeah, it was quite a successful aircraft. It is still flying around as a cargo plane, at least. Uh, yeah. Over three. 380 of these planes were built, which is like a pretty good middle ground, I would say. Now, finally, in the sim, we have a at least a mediocre representation of a real DC-10 cockpit. This is uh, not near as anything realistic, but it's fine, right? <laughs> it's uh, it's gonna work out. Let's just go ahead and uh, fly this plane a little bit and experiment a little bit and especially talk about it a little bit and its little flaws. All right, let's just go ahead and take off. All right, these three engines are uh, pushing us forward quite a bit. That's actually like the main thing I like about this plane, the three engines. It look it just looks very special and I think we left a door open. Oh yeah, the door thing was another story with the DC-10, but more on that later. Uh, okay, uh, let's just go ahead and take off. Alright, 120 knots. Uh, we should be able to rotate pretty soon. There we go. And we are off the ground. This is looking like a good flight, isn't it? All right, that was a pretty successful takeoff, even though we have left our door open. I wonder if that would actually work like this in real life. I think it might, uh, but uh, obviously the pressurization systems would not work, and the structure of this plane would be very, very much uh, weak. We might fall apart every second, I guess. That is something that could happen, but actually a flight like this could work. <laughs> Whatever. Now, of course, again, the, the thing that stands out most about the DC-10 is its very interesting design choices. You know, the three engines they just stand out very much and you know back in the days the three engine design worked out very very well you know the reason behind these three engines is by the way it's a very long story actually but there's that rule with flying over water and that is if one of your two engines fail then that other engine will only be able to keep you in the air for around an hour of flight time so that means if you fly over the ocean where land is over one hour of flight time away then you're not allowed to fly Flying there with a twin jet. At least that's how it used to be. So why not build a plane with three engines so that you still have two engines left if one fails, right? That was actually a very smart idea. These days we uh, don't have that rule anymore, pretty much. We have this ETOP certification and it's pretty boring to talk about. <laughs> All right, come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm just trying to land this plane while I'll talk about random stuff. Let's just go at... Oh, my goodness. See, the DC-10 and the MD-11, especially the MD-11, these are not very easy planes to land. They're, especially, they're different. But these old planes, they are very quick stoppers, actually. This was no issue at all. Despite this pretty bad landing, technically, but it was a, it was a safe one, at least. I kind of. All right, the FPS have gone down the drain, but the landing was actually... I mean, it was safe enough, at least. It was, of course, not a crash, so no worries at all, right? So yeah, everything steamed fine with this plane until a uh, very turbulent of years came for this one. You know, I was side mentioning something about the doors earlier on, and uh, yeah. After only one year of entering service, there was an American Airlines DC-10 that, uh, you know, the, the door blew out at around 11,000 feet, which is something that you might not want to have happening. But it happened, because the uh, internal locking mechanism was not fully engaged. I would love to actually simulate that here, but I don't seem to be able to uh, actually access the cargo door, or is that so? There were several incidents with cargo doors with this plane. Uh, yeah, it was not that good of a mechanism. There was a very big design flaw in that one, actually. You know, the cargo door design was uh, pretty special. The DC-10 had cargo doors that open outwards, which uh, didn't work that well. But let's go ahead and land. Oh, goodness. This is the very short runway, but let's see. You know, this was something I like to call a short landing. Sometimes you have to make a landing bad so that your plane stops on a short one. So no problem at all, right? <laughs> well, that outward opening mechanism, well, it had a few flaws. It had to be very, very secure. And if there was a malfunction, then uh, something that did happen was an explosive decompression. You know, there were several accidents where they lost control of the aircraft, or at least partly. And, you know, there were some fatal accidents, which is why this plane was uh, very, very much hated for a long, long time. I mean, honestly, this is the 737 MAX of the 20th century. That's really how I would call it. 
And yeah, in general, there were quite a lot of accidents with this plane. This was not the best safety record at all. But one thing I wonder about is uh, if these three engines are actually needed. You know, this is actually a pretty good plane. Could you just remove this third engine, which is, by the way, called the second engine? You know, it's one, two, and three, if that makes sense. And still fly this plane like a normal plane. You know, see, you know, there's that common problem about using more than two engines or let's just say more engines than necessary because you know, they use a lot more fuel compared to only two engines, right? Let's just uh, cut this one off. Can we just do that? All right, then we have lost two engines. Only one of the three engines are actually running, right? Yeah, the upper engine doesn't deliver any thrust anymore. This is perfect. I think this might still work out. There we go. That was perfect. Now, despite this plane's little issues, it was actually flying around for quite a while compared to something like the 737 MAX, which is uh, probably... It can be declared as uh, dead by now. I don't know. Is the 737 MAX ever going to return? Probably not. <laughs> We just lost another cargo door. And yeah, it was flying around for many, many years as a passenger plane and actually still is as a cargo plane. And this one is not doing very well with these two engines, never mind. You know, FedEx still uses this plane a lot and it's still used, for example, in the Middle East as well, quite a lot. And I mean, it's quite a solid plane after all. I mean, it had its little issues and turbulences, but it, it flies very well, doesn't it? Uh, this is a, a great one. Even though it's called Death Chamber by a lot of people, you know, DC-10 Death Chamber. You know, but I mean, you know, this is for today a very cheap plane for its size, so uh, why not get it? And uh, you know, let me just mention this is not a very uh, small plane, this is actually a two aisle one. It was, after all, built for transcontinental traffic, you know, you know, flying in the Atlantic, for example, and this plane is really struggling to fly. So, uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.